This video was sponsored by Raycon. I... I defeated the Cyclops. Who knew that Cyclopses were vulnerable to logical paradoxes? All I had to do was ask it how Raycons can be so basic and offer such high quality while only being half the price of other premium wireless earbuds. Even less when you get 15% off by going to buyraycon.com slash Arlo. Then it aged backwards and forwards at the same time until it became an inverted event horizon and dispersed into a thousand different dimensions. I don't like the eternal realm. But now I must continue my journey to find death and get my everyday earbuds back. Oh, did you really follow me here? Uh, it's you! Why did you drag your desk here? That's not important! Give me back my Raycons! Okay, fine. Really? Uh, oh, my beloved Raycons. So slim and sleek. How my ears have longed for your perfect, impossibly comfortable fit. So small. Completely wireless. So easy to hook up to Bluetooth. Wait, but are they charged? Of course they're charged. They last up to six hours on a charge and up to 24 hours using the convenient charging case. It is nearly impossible to run them out all the way. So why are you giving them back? Raycons come in a variety of fun colors. I wish to switch things up. Also, they upgraded the case. It lasts 32 hours now. Wow. What's happening? Impossible. The space-time destruction you caused has somehow spread to the eternal realm. Oh boy, I haven't been in this big a pickle since the time I said the September 2019 Nintendo Direct was only okay. A strange time rift has opened up in front of me. I've got no choice. My desk and I are going through it. You can just... Oh, you are in for a special treat today, my friends, because it's time for that staple of 2015 YouTube, the top 10 video. Tier lists? What's a tier list? Here at Arlo Stuff Industries, we like to keep it old school. And this video is actually a sequel to my first top 10 video about Nintendo remasters I want on Switch. So it's basically like the YouTube equivalent of a classic revival of a fan favorite series. This video is basically just as amazing and important as Metroid Dread is what I'm saying. Seriously though, in the previous video, I talked about the remasters I want most. The older games I would absolutely love to take with me on the go and also play in HD, but there are just so, so many games that I would love to have on Switch. I mean, old games in general, that's something I complain about constantly. And while the ultimate dream is a full fat classic game service where we can play everything we could ever want on our Switches, there are certain games that I feel would benefit most from remasters. A shine here, a polish there, and a little control tweak while you're at it. There are also certain games that, I don't know, I just want. Like, no one's really screaming for them to be remastered, I just want them on my Switch. Some of those too. So here they are. In no particular order, here are 10 more Nintendo remasters I would love to have on Switch. So I can complain about the prices, but then buy them anyway. Yeah, life of a Nintendo fan for ya. First up is Super Paper Mario. As you may know, I have mixed feelings on this game. It was the first Paper Mario title to try and reinvent the formula, doing away with turn-based combat in favor of platforming-based action. Sort of a return to Mario's traditional style, albeit with some RPG elements carrying over from the previous games. Personally, I feel like the gameplay is only okay. The weird pixel companions aren't nearly as interesting as the partners of old, and the whole 2D, 3D flipping mechanic is cute, but not interesting enough to base a whole game on. One thing the game does have going for it, though, is the story. It's super epic, it's got lots of characters, Luigi and Peach and Bowser play big parts, it's just great. I mean, one could even argue that they went a little too overboard with the story, and I can see why the team decided to dial it back after that. And I put dial it back in huge quotes. So if I'm not that big a fan of the game beyond its story, why do I want it remastered? Well, a couple reasons. I'd really love for other people to be able to play it. I think most people like the gameplay more than I do, so the general audience would probably enjoy having it. And it would be great for people to see what Paper Mario stories used to be like when there were basically no creative limitations in place. Mainly though, I want to play it again, and I don't want to play it on Wii. I mean, I only played it the once over a decade ago. I want to give it another go and see if my opinion has changed at all, and I'd love to experience that story again. The game has kind of an interesting stylized thing going for it, though honestly, I think it looks kind of ugly. But it would look considerably less ugly upscaled to 1080p. It certainly wouldn't be a difficult one to bring to Switch. Map the little scanny Amy thing to the gyro and map the waggle to a button and you're good to go. 
If they announced a Super Paper Mario remaster, would there be that part of me that was dismayed that they specifically decided to remaster the one Paper Mario game that's the least like Paper Mario in terms of gameplay? Absolutely. But once I got over that, I'd gladly pick it up. If you ask someone what the best Mario Kart game is, you'll get one of two answers. One, Double Dash. Two, I see that look in your eye, and if I don't say Double Dash, you're gonna argue with me, aren't you? Or is that only when I ask people? Huh. Yes, I am a Double Dash fan. There are many finer elements to consider when judging the quality of a Mario Kart game, such as course design, drifting and boost mechanics, item roster and balancing, etc. And I'll fully admit, at least from what I could tell when I played it as a teen, Double Dash is a HORRIBLY balanced game! I've got a lot of strong negative feelings on snaking, and while the idea of different characters being more likely to get certain items is great in theory, just be quick enough to grab Toad and Toadette and you'll cut a mushroom-fueled path straight to victory, while your friend piloting Koopa and Paratroopa feebly sends a barrage of shells your way to little avail. But despite all that, darn it, I still love Double Dash. Personally, I think the two-driver mechanic might be the one big mechanical innovation we've seen in the series. Everything else has felt like tiny little novelties or small steps forward. Co-op where one player drives and the other handles weapons and both players have to work together to get a boost out of the gate is such a cool idea. And even when playing on your own, being able to hold two items and switch between them always felt like it made a really big difference. Then, I could be wrong, but I feel like it had the most new items at the time. Mario Kart 8 certainly wowed me with the size and scope and anti-gravity nature of its tracks, but in terms of gameplay, Double Dash might have been the last time I sat down with a new Mario Kart and felt like I was really playing a new Mario Kart. Also, it has King Boo and Petey Piranha. Come on! Reasons for a remaster are obvious. I just want to play it again. Double Dash has just got so much character. The gameplay is so good. And even though Nintendo has no real reason to remaster it, I can still put it on this list. Because this is my video, and if I just want an excuse to talk about how much I love Double Dash, then that's the, that's the way the cookie crumbles, my friend. I know what the general consensus is on Star Fox Adventures. I know that a big Star Fox fan probably looks at adventures the way I look at Hey Pikmin. I know that it's one, why can't Nintendo just make a regular Star Fox game in a long line of why can't Nintendo just make a regular Star Fox games? But I have a weird affection for it. I played it as a teenager, back in that magical GameCube heyday when Nintendo was pumping out awesome games left and right and they were all I cared to play. Pretty much anything I played during that time permanently cemented itself in my heart, and Star Fox Adventures is no exception. To this day, the first few hours of the game give me that warm, fuzzy, nostalgic feeling. And honestly, I feel like it deserves a little more credit than it gets. It's not really a Star Fox game, and it's got some weird issues and cheesy voice acting and whatnot. But come on, this is a AAA Zelda-style adventure game developed by pre-Microsoft Rare. It's fairly ambitious, and the graphics and art style and everything are really good. It's the kind of grand adventure I'd love to see more of today. Would a remaster actually sell, or is Star Fox Adventures a little too divisive? I don't know, but I think it would look really good with some touch-ups. And despite spending a lot of time in the game and starting it up like 10 times, I've never actually finished it. I would love a new opportunity to finally play it all the way through. For real this time. Definitely. I would not, I would not just quit after my second sitting again. No sorry. Okay, so these next few picks aren't quite as simple as the previous ones. I've got particular reasons for why they should happen and how it should be done. First off, sort of an unusual one. It's widely believed that Super Metroid is still a terrific game and doesn't really need a remake. And I do agree, for the most part. I might be in the minority here, but I feel like the experience is brought down a little by the controls. There are just a few elements that feel a little fiddly. Wall jumping is a big one. The window to pull off a wall jump is really small, and sometimes I lose the groove and have to try for ages just to get up one wall. And I don't know if it has to do with the exact trajectory of the jump versus the spin jump or what, but fine platforming is easier in all later games. Trying to cross these long hallways with lots of little platforms over lava while getting blasted by enemies 
can be a bit annoying. I think some very small tweaks to the controls would essentially turn Super Metroid into a perfect game. Gosh, even just utilizing the extra buttons on a Switch controller would make a huge difference. Switching between items can be a bit of a pain in the original. Dedicated buttons for most of them would be awesome. Then I would never want to get rid of the pixel graphics, not even in a full remake. A pixel graphics remake of Super Metroid is something we'll be talking about on another day. But for a remaster, they might be able to clean the game up just a little. The SNES had its technical limitations, as any system does, and now that we've got a lot more breathing room, I think they could smooth out a few muddy tiles and glitchy elements. Then of course, I would just love to play the game in full screen. Oh, can you imagine? It would look incredible! I know the original Super Metroid is already on NSO, so Nintendo has no reason to do anything like what I'm proposing. But again, this is my list, and a little remaster would suit me just fine. Even though the control tweaks and glitch fixes would probably make veterans and speedrunners mad. <laughs> Golden Sun is another weird one. Reasons for bringing the first two games to Switch are obvious. Golden Sun and its sequel, Golden Sun The Lost Age, are really one big game. If you link them together, you get one gigantic story. So selling them as a complete package would be very fitting, especially for the series' 20th anniversary, which is this year, just saying. More than anything though, they're just super good games. They're these massive epic adventures on the tiny little GBA. And they're my kinda RPG, where the gameplay is just deep enough to allow strategy and customization, but simple enough even for an Arlo to understand. With a Double Advance Wars remake announced at E3, the idea of Golden Sun getting a similar treatment is being tossed around a lot. But here's my problem with that idea. I don't want Nintendo to remake these games and make them look like toys, <laughs> or give them merely serviceable 3D models like in the DS Golden Sun. The sprite work in these games is incredible. They appear to use the same technique that Donkey Kong Country pioneered, where a lot of it was created using CG models which were then converted to lower resolution sprites. The end result looks fantastic, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. However, I frequently find myself imagining what would happen if a game like this used higher resolution sprites created from those exact same 3D assets, assuming they were still around somewhere. Would this look cool, or would it look out of place compared to the other traditional pixel art in the game? I don't know, but I'm intrigued by the idea. And maybe they could give some other parts of the game a facelift as well. Sharper pixel art and such. Even if they redid a decent amount of the sprites, it could still count as a remaster and not a remake as long as the base code and everything was the same, right? Yeah, I don't know, and I don't feel like getting into that argument today. Whatever the case, even if my idea is stupid and all the games need is a two-pack on Switch with no other changes and they're just wasting a spot on this remaster list, then fine! Just give us some Golden Sun! <laughs> the series is way too good to be left behind. Oh, heck, if they hadn't abandoned it, maybe we would be getting our third giant 3D Golden Sun sequel by now. I feel like a remaster is the least they could do. Okay, let's get back to some simple by-the-numbers remasters. F-Zero GX. Come on, this is an easy one. Personally, I'm not a big racing guy. But one, the few times I've picked up this game, I've had a lot of fun with it. It's so incredibly fast, the courses are so cool, and I love the whole sci-fi thing, so I'd definitely give it another go if it came to Switch. And two, most importantly, I know how many people would love a GX remaster. I mean, come on, from Nintendo's standpoint, it would be the easiest way to throw a bone to the poor F-Zero fans out there. You don't even have to make a new game, you don't have to come up with your, your magical new idea or whatever. One simple simple remaster wouldn't be the same as a new game, but the weight of the gesture versus the effort to develop it? It's a no-brainer! Like seriously, don't change a thing about the game if you don't want to. Upscale it to 1080p and make sure it runs at a stable 60fps and you're gold. That's literally it. And if you want to make the fans lose their minds, include online play. Boom! Done! Just do it! <laughs> Just do it! If it doesn't sell that much, look at that, you barely spent any money on it. If it does sell, look at that, maybe you should make more F-Zero games. Whatever happens, we all win. Everybody gets a prize. And Nintendo, if you ever do remaster the game, it will be a big win for video game preservation. Because these cutscenes, the generations that come after ours need to know about these.
I've talked about this game a great number of times, usually as a way to preface talking about its sequel. But now the turn has tabled, let's flip it around. Tropical Freeze is probably the best 2D platformer I've ever played. Why do I always say probably? It's definitely the best 2D platformer I've ever played. But before Tropical Freeze came along, that title belonged to DKC Returns. I didn't play it on Wii, but I played the 3DS version and loved every minute of it. What can I say that hasn't been said so, so many times before? Between the incredible fluid controls and the impossibly good level design, it's what any 2D platformer should strive to be. And I hate that it's stuck not only on old consoles, but in SD. If I can play Tropical Freeze at a crisp HD resolution on my Switch, I believe its predecessor deserves to sit beside it and get the same treatment. Two modern masterpieces of platforming goodness shoulder to shoulder on Switch, as it should be. Ah, oh, here's a good one. Eternal Darkness is another one of those Nintendo IPs that don't seem like Nintendo IPs, but Nintendo does own them. But you have to wonder why, because the company never does anything with them. And Eternal Darkness is the very definition of a cult classic. It was on the GameCube, but it sold very poorly, and plenty of people have never even heard of it today, but it's got a very strong fan base. It's an extremely ambitious and experimental game. It spans multiple generations of characters. It's got this deep cosmic horror plot with tons of cutscenes. The writing and voice acting are great. It's the first game I ever saw with a sanity mechanic. The combat uses this whole system of targeting different body parts. And it's got one very cool element that I won't spoil now in case something ever does come of the game, but at the time it was mind blowing. I never got around to finishing Eternal Darkness, and it's such an amazing passion project, not to mention a terrific taste of horror, that any kind of re-release would be an incredible opportunity. A very simple upscaling would be fine by me, as long as I could play it on my Switch. Yeah, they would have to redo some of those mind-blowing elements I was talking about, but it might not be too hard. I don't know if Nintendo will ever do anything with Eternal Darkness again, but they keep renewing the copyright, so I guess we can keep our fingers crossed. It's yet another fairly obscure piece of Nintendo history, and there would certainly be no harm in bringing it to light again. Especially since the planned spiritual successor is... not going to happen. Let's close out the list with two 3DS games that I just plain don't want to be stuck on my 3DS forever. Plenty of people have 3DSs, and Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon sold plenty of copies, so it's not like it's a sad little cult classic that deserves a second chance with a wider audience. It's just such a good game that I want to have it with me forever. And as with most 3DS games that I love, my aging, tired eyes don't want to play it on that tiny screen anymore. Also, Dark Moon is a game that looks impossible possibly good on 3DS. So much so that it's clear the hardware is holding it back dramatically. You can see how the detailed environments and the soft lighting all struggle against the 3DS's hyper low res screen. Don't believe me? Just check out how it looks when upscaled on an emulator. I want to play this on my Switch! I certainly wouldn't argue if Nintendo wanted to redo the UI and touch some stuff up, but honestly, this looks great all on its own. The game's got some problems, of course, that I'm sure I've talked about enough times already, but it's still got so much going for it. So many great mechanics and sequences and gags and set pieces and everything. We've got Luigi's Mansion 3 on Switch, and I'm certainly happy about that. But as with DKC Returns and Tropical Freeze, I must say, Dark Moon and 3 sure would look nice next to each other, wouldn't they? And finally, a similar pick. Super Mario 3D Land is the 3D Mario game we tend to forget about. This was a big milestone for Mario, the first original 3D Mario game made for a handheld. It's got all the same problems I've got with its successor, 3D World, and in fact, those problems are even more pronounced here. The format is a mix between 2D and 3D Mario conventions, so it's fairly simplistic, and it's incredibly, incredibly easy, even more so than 3D World. You can casually run through every world and almost every special world and collect 90% of the star coins along the way without even breaking a sweat. But darn it, it's just so fun. 
It's actually nice to be able to just sit down and blast your way through a Mario game. The level design is great, the gameplay is great, the whole thing is just great. It's an easy breezy way to spend a few afternoons. I've already put tons of hours into my 3DS copy and I would put plenty more into a Switch version. Once again, a very simple upscaling would still look terrific, I'm sure. Yeah, they'd have to do something about the small handful of parts that require 3D. Or, I guess not really, because they didn't do anything about them when the 2DS came around, so there you go. Scale that bad boy up and slap it on Switch. It's Mario, it'll sell like crazy, just do it. That's it for the main list, but as with the last video, I do have some honorable mentions. After that video, I did a video on five 3DS games that deserve a second chance on Switch, and those is the honorable mentions. Like, that, that whole list. I also want them on Switch. Less for the remaster element, and more to give them another shot at success, because they're all games that had a lot of heart put into them, but didn't find a ton of success during their original runs. I mean, all you people excited about Metroid Dread but never got to play Samus Returns? Tell me you wouldn't buy a Switch remaster in a heartbeat. And finally, seeing as it's been a while since my first wish list of remasters, how about we go over that old list and see if any of my wishes came true? Pikmin 1 and 2? Nope. We did get a port of 3 though, so that was nice. Super Mario Sunshine? Yes! Though it was a limited release, so it's a bit of a monkey's paw situation there. Metroid Prime Trilogy, no. Still holding out hope though. Super Mario Galaxy, yes, same as Sunshine, limited release. But Galaxy 2, no, for some weird reason. Luigi's Mansion, no, but we did get a sequel, and that was <laughs> certainly nice. And Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door, no, but we also got a sequel, in a sense. So there you go, another list of games that I would very much like to have on my Switch. What's your list? Give me your list! Did you already give me your list after the last video? Well now you gotta give me 10 more games Nintendo should remaster. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm hungry. There's no, uh, there's no joke or anything there. I'm just hungry and I'm gonna go eat. So, uh, bye.